Hey guys, how's it going? The Apple's WWDC event finally just got over, which means that new betas for iOS 15 are finally available. Now I have it installed on my iPhone 12 Pro Max here and iOS 15 definitely looks good. Now Apple has added a ton of new features and some pretty cool under the hood little changes, but I won't be dwelling into the details of everything. Instead, in this video, we'll be talking about the top 10 features that you as a user are most bound to use. So without wasting any more time, this is one from Guiding Deck and let's get into it. Okay, so first up, we have some interesting changes to the FaceTime app. Apple has now made it cross-platform. Yep, you heard that right. You can now just send invites to your friends and family who are using Android or even web like Windows and they can just use the FaceTime web interface to join your video calls seamlessly. All you need to do is open the FaceTime app, create a link and just share it with the people you want to invite. For those who don't have an Apple device, they just have to enter their name and then wait for you to let them in. As simple as that. Now Apple is clearly taking the fight to Zoom and other video conferencing apps and to be honest, I'm not gonna lie, I personally do like Apple's connection quality here. And the best part here is that all of these calls are going to be end-to-end -end encrypted. So whether you're using FaceTime on iPhone or using it on an Android device or using it on the laptop, any Windows laptop, whatever, it's all going to be end-to-end -end encrypted. You know, Apple's focus with security carries forward here. Now, of course, when this feature was being announced, I was like, yeah, I mean, that sounds good, but FaceTime has been one of the reasons why a lot of people buy iPhones in the first place. So why are they making it cross-platform? I mean, isn't that kind of an exclusive thing to Apple? Well, as it turns out, Apple still has some new in-house exclusives reserved just for iPhones. So what are these features? Well, you have portrait video and you have spatial audio. So the idea here is to make your video look good and the audio sound better. If you have a lot of background noise, such as construction work or something, just tap to enable spatial audio and cancel out the background noise. Speaking of FaceTime, one of the biggest things that Apple has launched with iOS 15 is SharePlay, which is honestly my favorite thing out here well, in the list of things that iOS 15 has introduced. With SharePlay, you can seamlessly and super easily share your screen with the person you're on call with FaceTime. So whether it's working on a PowerPoint presentation or watching a video together, or maybe even ordering food, you can literally share your screen seamlessly as per your liking. Now, Apple claims that it has a simple API and will allow developers to integrate it. And considering that big names like Hulu and Disney Plus are already in on it, I totally expect this thing to be a big hit. Okay, so that was FaceTime, but Apple has also brought some amazing changes to Safari. Like it's a complete design overhaul and I love it. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of our website loaded on both iOS 14 and iOS 15. Now, as you can see, the new Safari browser adapts to the colors of the website to adjust the background here. The address bar has gone to the bottom and instead of being a border element, it now hovers on it. Speaking of which, Apple has hidden the various menus inside the three-dot icon and you only get the tabs button here. Tapping on that reveals the new grid style layout for Safari which I personally find much better than the card stack on the current iOS 14. Oh, and if you want to switch between tabs, you can just swipe left and right on the address bar too. The three dot icon, which I mentioned earlier, now has multiple features inside it. So you have the usual bookmarks, reading list and history. But other than that, you can dynamically adjust the text size, find text on the page, request a desktop version of the website and much more. This just feels like a proper web browser now. And to be honest, the list doesn't really end there. So open the settings app and then tap on Safari. And one big change you'll see right here is extensions. Yep, Safari Mobile also has support for extensions. Now, currently there are only different sorts of ad and mining blockers available, but I'm sure that more extensions will make their way here in no time. Now scroll a bit down and you'll see the hide IP address. And this is part of the private relay feature. So with iOS 15, you also get iCloud Plus and iCloud Plus brings about two new features, which is private relay and hide my mail. Now let's talk about private relay first. 
At its core, it's basically a VPN that hides your IP address to protect your online activity. Currently, based on my testing, it only works inside Safari, but I'm sure Apple will be able to extend this feature system-wide in the future. Now, like I said, iCloud Plus also comes with Hide My Email, and I quite frankly love it. So what it does is that it allows you to generate a random email address at iCloud.com and you can just share that email with whomsoever you want to. Any emails sent to that address will then be redirected to your personal mail, albeit with added encryption. Now, as I said, both of these features are available as part of the iCloud Plus membership, something that you will have to purchase separately. Or you can do something that I do, which is just subscribe to the Apple One membership, which gives you iCloud Plus, but then you also get Apple Music, Apple TV, and other Apple subscriptions all bundled into one seamless subscription. You can check out more about it from the link down in the description. Okay, now moving along, Apple brought out its own version of Google Lens. Apple actually brought out its own version of Google Lens. I'm not even kidding. It's literally Google Lens. But of course, it's Apple, so it just had to be a bit better, right? It's called Live Text, and what it basically means is that it can intelligently recognize text inside your photos. For instance, take this pic for example. I can just double tap here to highlight the text, and then I can copy paste it in a message, or just look up for it on the web for quick results. Super simple and works decently well to be honest too. Now, extending that feature is Spotlight. Now, you might already recall Spotlight, it's basically the universal search inside your iPhone, you know, you just uh, swipe down and then just type everything and you can just search inside your iPhone. Now with live text, that feature is extended to your photos, like literally you can search inside your photos. So for instance, that last image that you saw had the text Baker in it, right? So now I just go to search, enter Baker and voila, those images show up. Pretty cool, no? Okay, now you might recall Apple purchasing Dark Sky and just removing its Android version from the Play Store. Well, forget about that removed version, but it's high time that that acquisition showed its results. And well, finally, with iOS 15, we have an all new weather app. So you get the usual weather features, but with all new background animations that reflect the weather better and highlight the sun's location and everything. Then scroll a bit and you have all these features such as air quality, sunrise and sunset, air pressure, and so much more. Now, one of the biggest changes that we all as consumers definitely requested Apple to do was, well, give us a better way to manage notifications on an iPhone. I mean, if you're someone like me, you know that your iPhone can get crowded with a ton of notifications throughout the day. Well, with iOS 15, you do get better notifications. Enter notification summary. So what notification summary does is that you can select the apps for it and then it will combine their notifications into one single compressed stack and present it to you at selected time intervals. This just allows you to view your important notifications when you need them and get back to the not so important ones later on. Also, regardless of whether you use it or not, other similar notifications are still stacked. For instance, when you're chatting with a friend. Now, of course, while all of that helps, we should not let go of our productivity, which is why Apple has introduced the focus feature. So what exactly is focus? Well, it's like having custom DND profiles. You can have a complete do not disturb mode in which you get no calls or notifications, or you can set a work profile where once you've added your colleagues contacts, you'll only be notified when they send you a text and otherwise everything else is silenced. This status also shows up inside the messages app, so nobody will disturb you unnecessarily. Now, speaking of messages, there are some new features here as well, and it's just enhancing the overall user experience. So first up, you can pin messages inside the conversations, which was a much, much needed feature. Other than that, there's the new shared with you feature. Now, what it does is that it intelligently understands the kind of media that has been shared with you and then it makes it easier for you to find that media later on. So for instance, if my friend sends me a song on Apple Music, I can just open Apple Music and there's that song waiting for me under the shared with you section. Now other than that, there are a couple of new advancements here and there that I'll just briefly walk through. So first up, there's the new enhancements inside Apple Wallet. So you can upload your driver's license, but that feature is only available to selected US states. But the good thing there is that Apple is partnering with a lot of hotels. So your hotel card can be added to your Apple Wallet. So essentially you can just walk up to your hotel room, you like show your iPhone and just unlock the door. You don't really need that physical card. So that's good. 
Then there's Apple playing catch up with Google. I mean, seriously, you have Apple Memories inside the Photos app, which is similar to Google Photos. Then you have the new changes to Apple Maps, which is just Apple Maps trying to be as good as Google Maps. But I don't see a lot of users shifting from Google Maps or even Waze for that matter to Apple Maps. So there's that. And then there are some changes inside Notes that you can add your custom tags to it. And yeah some new privacy changes and finally siri has some new changes in the sense that siri can now understand your voice commands offline as well and all of that uh, audio processing takes place onto the device itself so nothing is shared online even to apple servers so that's good and yeah all in all it sounds very good and although the beta is currently well in beta it's a developer beta it still seems quite stable for day-to-day -day usage i mean i've been using it for quite some time and feels pretty smooth to me no issues whatsoever now of course this is the developer beta and apple has stated that the public beta will be coming out next month so stay tuned for that well that was it if you found this video helpful make sure to let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more awesome tech content till then this is one from guiding tech and i'll see you in the next one